Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I've been taking this uh, workbench roll around cart and I'm going to make a large enclosure for my NEMA Labs CNC. Now, you take a look at this, it's uh, seven foot long by about 34 inches deep. And in case you might be wondering why I'm making it so big, it's because I've got the NBX 5040 sitting on the left side. And today I'm going to be unboxing that one and setting it up on the right side. So let's get started. I have everything out of the box and some of the parts spread out ready to assemble. Let me just say that the packaging is amazing. Just look at all that foam that was in this box. The box had a few dings in it, but there's no way this thing could get damaged. The assembly of the 6040 is very similar to the 5040. The first step is to peel and stick the rubber feet to the bottom of the front and rear modules. Take notice that the rear module has a cable running through the extrusion with plug connectors on each end, but the connectors are not identical. Make sure you refer to the manual and get the correct connector plug going to the stepper motor on the right side. The other connector will plug into the back of the left Y-axis module. Next, it's time to assemble the T-Track plates to the front and rear modules using M5 by 16 millimeter screws. I'm going to leave all the screws loose for now until everything is lined up. Then it's time to add the HDF board using M5 by 20 millimeter screws and again I'm going to leave them loose for now. With the T-Track table loosely assembled it's time to install the right and left Y-axis modules. Just slip them into place and line up the holes and use M5 by 20 millimeter screws to fasten them. Again, leave the screws loose for now. The way this machine is designed, the Y-axis modules are machined for a perfect fit and they slide right into place. Now it's time to install the XZ module and let me tell you, this thing is heavy. So get some help if you can and it will be a lot easier than what you see me doing here. Notice that I use the knob on the X axis stepper motor to move the Z axis to the center to help balance the weight. I thought I shot video of installing the screws, but I guess I only took a picture. I used a block to raise up each side so it would make it easier to install the four M5 by 16 millimeter screws that go in from the bottom. Then I put in the three M6 by 25 millimeter cap screws from the side. Then it was time to go back and finish tightening all the screws that were left loose for adjustment. Step five is installing the spindle with four M4 by 18 millimeter cap screws. There is an Allen wrench provided for this, but I found it easier to use one with a ball end that I already had. I've got everything plugged in and it's time to home this thing. I need to move the Y axis off the hard stop just a little before clicking the home button. Now it's time to make some chips. I'm going to run a 3D carve using a file that I think I got from Thingiverse. I'm not really sure, but if I can find a link, I'll post it down below in the video description. I used a quarter inch down cut Jenny bit from Cadence Manufacturing for the roughing pass, and I'm using a 1 8 inch tapered ball nose bit for this finishing pass. I'm using a feed rate of 150 inches per minute for this finishing pass. Thank you. 
Here is the project hot off the machine and it turned out really smooth. The 6040 did a great job and I'm looking forward to running a lot of projects with this machine. If you'd like to check out the 5040 or the 6040 from Nemo Labs, I'll have a link below to their website as well as a link you can use to get a great discount on your purchase. If you want to see me run some more projects or you just want to see how I build the CNC enclosure to house both of these machines, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. Until the next one. Thank you very much for watching.